a lot of the complex diseases that we have seen dramatic increases in over the last few decades are associated with abnormalities in composition of the microbiome. The cause-effect relationship still remains to be understood. Clearly, we start asking the question, what's the role of diet? What is the role of post-genetic factors? And how do all these factors converge to bring about health or disease states? It is just amazing to see the extent and the efficiency of the agriculture here in Nebraska. Yeah, genomic selection is an important tool in agriculture. The University of Nebraska has an interesting program looking at the correlations between plants, microbes, and human health. Why are diseases such as inflammatory diseases increasing so much in the population? A lot of that might be due to changes in diet that we've had um, over the last few decades. One of the things you see in dietary patterns, especially in westernized countries, is a reduction in the diversity um, of compounds that are in a lot of the foods. How do we manipulate the gut ecosystem for better health? The number of dietary molecules or dietary compounds that we, we really know about and understand just how it influences the microbiome and the gut ecosystem is really rather small. And we'd really like to increase that and be very systematic about having a whole arsenal of molecules and food ingredients that we can use in a very predictable way to influence health through the gut ecosystem. How would you go about discovering those compounds? Exploit genetic diversity, exploit genomics and breeding in plants to be able to, to screen the type of molecular diversity that plants are capable of generating and let that inform us as to what potential compounds might influence the microbiome. Would that be natural diversity? Yes, indeed, we can rely upon the natural diversity that exists in these types of plants and exploit that for discovery processes, as you can see in the field behind us here, the amount of genetic diversity that exists in some of these plant species is just tremendous. In a field environment, it's very difficult to make many measurements of the same plant over and over again. So the really exciting things here is we can measure the same exact plants every couple of days. We can look at variation in chemical composition using a hyperspectral camera. We're starting to see some very exciting things, both about how the microbes can change uh, the phenotype and the health of the plant, but also how genetic variation in the plant can control what microbes grow on its roots, which changes the health of the plant, changes the chemical composition of the plant, and ultimately uh, could affect the nutritional value of the food we harvest from that plant. You really want to know and understand how those bacteria interplay, what their relationship to each other, how many of them are there, and how many of the function are there. If there are functions that are proactively degrading proteins or proactively degrading carbohydrates that you are eating. From the DNA, you basically get two informations. Who is there, which are the bacteria, but also you get what are potential functions, and this is extremely important. So how have we lost all these components? Because surely they must have been here all the time. We've lost molecular diversity in our food supply, and part of that has been through use of refined ingredients. We lose the molecular diversity, the very molecules that are feeding the microbiome. So once you identify molecules that are good for the health, how do you insert them into a diet? The food scientists are able to, to take those molecules and formulate them, package them together, so to speak, into a food in a way that's palatable. We could use test kitchens to prepare novel foods containing a prebiotic or a probiotic in it. We have what we call our sensory analysis panel, and they evaluate those foods. What food scientists can do is make that ingredient taste like something consumers will eat, and ultimately it gives them a health benefit. Genomics has a tremendous impact on our research. It gives us a wealth of information. We can identify specific species and members of the gut microbiota. A notobiotic mouse has a known composition. 
of the microbiota. So you can either maintain these animals germ-free, so they have no microbes in their bodies, or you can colonize them with very specific members of a gut microbiota in order to ask questions about the role of those individual organisms. We've learned that there is a relationship or an association between changes in the composition of the microbiome and certain immune-mediated diseases such as autoimmune diseases, lupus, um, multiple sclerosis. We're really in kind of the infancy of, of what we understand about the microbiome for health. There's still a lot there that remains to be evaluated with the gut microbiome. And that's really a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting research into, in many ways, kind of atypical diseases. One of the key things is, is not just can you change the gut microbiome, but can you influence health in a way that's measurable. What inspires you about this work? There's a couple of things that, that, that really drive me personally. One is to be able to change the way we think about agriculture and to change the way we think about a university system. We're essentially putting together elements from the entire university system, putting them together into a pipeline of discovery to translation. One of the directions we want to go is to, just to really understand how diet interacts with that gut ecosystem and define molecules that can change the ecosystem. You know, when you come to a farmer's market like this, you realize how far we've become disconnected from the source. Yeah, and in the years with all the over-processing of foods, we've lost the major components to a healthy diet. You know, the good thing is, with the research, they actually can tell us now what we're missing. And more importantly, how to recover it.